SharePoint lists are a common data source for many organizations. And with the increase of users with Microsoft 365 licenses, I think that can only continue. And it's not just SharePoint. So Teams, OneDrive and Lists are all built on that SharePoint platform. So actually we might be interacting with SharePoint without even knowing it. So if we've got our information there in SharePoint, the question is, how do we get to it with Power Query? And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to get the URL of the SharePoint site. So here I have a SharePoint list on the screen and in the address bar at the box, you can see the full URL for that list. However, we don't want the full URL. We just want the section that goes up to the word after sites. So I've got HTTPS, my SharePoint site address, then the word sites, and then the name of my site. That's the bit that I want to copy. So I press Control C, because that's the magic element that we need for Power Query. The next step is to get that data into Power Query. So here I am in Excel, I'll go to data, get data. Now, SharePoint lists exist in two places. If I go to from online services, you can see the first item is from SharePoint online list. Or if we go to from other sources, there is an item that's called from SharePoint list. Now the differences are that from SharePoint list will connect to SharePoint on-premise and SharePoint online, while the other option of SharePoint Online list only connects to SharePoint Online. The method we choose also determines the type of data that we can get out from SharePoint. To start with, let's select from SharePoint Online list. In here, I'll paste the URL that I previously copied. Now we have an implementation 1.0 or 2.0. If we expand the advanced options, you can see that 1.0 doesn't give us any additional options. But if we select 2.0, we can decide to select default or all. So default gives us the default view for that SharePoint list, or if we go to all, it gives us everything from that SharePoint list. Because somebody could change the default view, I think it's worth selecting all. That makes sure that we get all the columns. I'll click that and then click OK. If this is your first time connecting to SharePoint through Power Query, it will ask for your credentials. So I'll go to my Microsoft account and then click sign in. OK, it's now asked me to sign in, select my email address, and then I can just click connect. The navigator window appears and it gives us all of the tables that exist within that SharePoint site. A lot of these at the moment are for SharePoint's internal workings. But if we know the name of our list, which is PQ example, we can select that and then click transform data. OK, that's now loaded into our preview window. You can see that we have our additional data and we also have some additional columns. And some of this information is useful. It gives us the date modified and the date created. And there's lots of additional fields in there. Some of them are null, some of them probably contain some useful information. But really what we want is our original table. So we can select those columns, we can decide if we want the ID column or not. I'll include it this time. Then from the home ribbon, we can go to remove columns, remove other columns then we can close and load that into Excel. Now, what view would we get if we didn't decide to load all the fields, but instead we decided just to load the default view? Well, if we come to source, you can see that we have view mode. In there, we can change all to default. And this is the view that we would have received had we selected the default view in the connector window. So we get these fields here. If I delete the remove other columns, you'll see that the only fields we get are that title column all the way to our ID column. So deciding between default and all determines whether we get these additional columns or not. Right, I've got my columns selected. So let's go transform and then detect data types. So title, category, project ref, fees are all text. Recoverable fees and cost to complete are whole numbers. They should probably be currency. I'll replace that current step. Status is text and then ID is a whole number. So we can go to home, close and load, close and load two. I'll load this as a table on the existing worksheet in cell A1 and then click OK. 
Right, that's now loaded the information from SharePoint. So now if we come back to SharePoint, I'm going to select one of my values and edit that value. So let's say it's 2,600 as recoverable fees and cost to complete is 4,600. I'll click save on that list. Then I'll come back to Excel from the data menu and then click refresh all. Fantastic, and now Power Query has updated to show those new values. But before you head off, there's two other things which I need to show you and make you aware of. We've just seen how we can use the SharePoint online list connector. Now let's have a look at the SharePoint list connector. So from the data ribbon, go to get data, from other sources, and then from SharePoint list. I can paste in my URL and then click OK. This loads the navigator window in the same way. From there, I'll select PQ example and then click transform data. Once this loads in the preview window, you'll notice that we have not just a few more columns that we had before, but we have a lot more columns. So by using the SharePoint list connector, we get access to a lot more information. You can see we have our title, the date modified and the date created. They're the same as we previously had. If we keep moving to the right, we get our data that we actually had in the table. We might need to rename our fields. And if we keep scrolling, we eventually get to the author and editor fields. If I select any one of those records, you can see that it gives us a lot of information about that record. So who the author was, what their email address is. You can see that there's a wealth of information in here. And that's the same with editor as well. We can see all of that data about that record. We can even expand this column. So I don't want all those fields. Let's say I want email, I can then click OK. This then tells me the email address of the last person to update this item in SharePoint. There is an alternative method that we can use and it doesn't use Power Query. So if we're not undertaking any other transformations within Power Query on our SharePoint list, this other option may be a better option. I've got my list open, I'll come to export and then click export to Excel. If I come to my downloads folder, you'll see that this has downloaded a query.iqy file. I'm going to double click this to open it up. It gives me a warning message to say that this file has data connections. I'm going to click enable. Then I'm going to select the table and the existing worksheet. And I'll click OK. This now loads my SharePoint list into Excel without going through Power Query. But this table has a connection back to my SharePoint list. So I'll come back to SharePoint. Let me edit this value again. So recoverable fees of 12,600 and cost to complete of 14,600. I'll click Save. Then back in Excel from the table design or even from the data ribbon, I can click Refresh All. That will then update this table directly from the SharePoint list. And if I no longer want this table to be connected to my SharePoint list, from the table design ribbon, I can just click unlink and that will then break this link. Okay, and now you can see the refresh button there is grayed out because this table is no longer connected directly to SharePoint. So that's it, that's four ways that we can get data from a SharePoint list into Excel and all of those methods update just by clicking refresh. Three of them involve Power Query and we can change the connect or the settings to get the columns that we need. Or we saw that we can have that IQY file that downloads from SharePoint. We can open that up in Excel and it gives us a live connection back to our list. So hopefully you like this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to know more about Power Query and how it can help you connect to other sources, then check out our training academy over at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.